Okay then gang, so the first thing I'd like to talk about is the Context API. So the Context API gives us a way to share state up and down a component tree quite easily. Now you can do that without the Context API, I know that, you can do that with props, but sometimes that can get a little bit messy, especially as your component trees and application as a whole becomes bigger. So the Context API aims to solve this issue and it's gonna do that by giving us a central place to store data or state and then share it between components without having to pass it down as props. So it's gonna clean things up for us a little and it's gonna make working with shared data much, much easier. Now, if you're familiar with Redux, this concept might seem a little familiar. Having this central place where data is stored and it can be accessed without the need to continually pass down props several components deep sometimes. So the Context API is now a different approach to this. It's an alternative to Redux, if you like. And when we use it alongside hooks, it can behave very, very similar to the way Redux behaves. So imagine this scenario. Imagine we have an application with this component tree right here. So we have app sitting at the root, then page view, and nav bar. Then in the nav bar, we have a status bar, then a book list component, then book details, add book. Quite simplistic, I know, but just bear with me. Now, imagine we also have some state defined in the root component right here. And that state is the UI theme. So is this gonna be a dark theme or a light theme, or it could define colors or something like that. Either way, it's a bit of data that we maybe want to share with some of our components in this tree. So say for example, we want these four components, book list, details, add book, and status bar to use this data. Then in order for that to happen, normally what we do is we'd pass that down as props, right? Through every single component until it reaches every component that uses it, these four at the bottom. So this is fine, we can still do this, but what we're doing here is passing props everywhere, even through components that don't necessarily use the props or use the state directly. These are acting as carrier components for props, if you like, they're just carrying the props from one component down to another. So again, this is okay, you can still do this, perfectly fine, but this approach can sometimes get a bit messy especially when there's a lot of components in the chain and the application gets bigger. So the Context API tries to solve this problem of having to pass props down at every level, even through components which don't use them directly. So what we could do now instead of this approach is to create a new context in a new file somewhere, which is basically us making a place where a shared state could be initially defined and set up. Now, when we create a context, we then have to provide it to our component tree so that the components in that tree can actually access it and get the data. Now we do this via the context provider, which is just a React tag and it wraps whichever components need access to it. So now every component inside this tree right here could, if it wanted to, have access to the shared state or data, but we don't have to use that data in each of these components. And now no longer are we passing props down through the components, we're just directly accessing the data from the context in the components which need it. So this is the basic premise of the Context API and it can make working with shared data much easier in a lot of cases. So then if we have a quick look at the context page here on the React website, we can see when it advises to use context in an application because it might not always be the best solution. So it says right here that it's designed to share data that can be considered global for a tree of React components, such as the current authenticated user, a UI theme or preferred language, or maybe some other kind of data which is considered global for that particular tree of components, right? So if you're ever in a situation where you're unsure as to whether you should use context or something else, ask yourself this question. Is the data that I wanna share global and is it gonna be used in several of the child components? If so, then context probably is a good shout. If not, then there might be other options which are better suited. For example, component composition, which you can read more about on this page down here. So just bear in mind that context is not a catch-all for every different situation. It's just for global state that's shared between many different components in a tree, okay? So one more thing before we start coding, in this course, I am gonna be using the React Developer Tools for Chrome. It's just gonna help us out when we're inspecting states and stuff like that inside the application. 
So if you want to download this, go to the Chrome Web Store and just search for React Developer Tools and install it into Chrome and then you're going to be able to do that as well. So anyway, now we know a little bit more about the Context API and why we use it, let's go ahead in the next tutorial and actually create our first context and provider.